okay? One day, you were watching Christian television, and you heard the gospel for the first time. You knelt down and invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, and then you realized that the Word of God, the Bible, was the authority for the Christian's life. In reading the Bible, after you'd been a Mason for all of these years, you came to realize there was conflict in what you were teaching as compared to what you were reading in the Word of God. Tell us what that conflict was. Okay, the first conflict is in 1 John 3.3, 3, where Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And of course, a born-again Christian knows when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus about born again, he's referring to the sacrificial death in which he would suffer for the salvation or the redemption of mankind. This is not what Masonry is talking about when they're talking about being born again. Also in Romans, the sixth chapter, Paul talks about our death, burial, and resurrection to become a new creature in Christ. But it's through the person and sacrificial death of Jesus Christ that he's born again. In Freemasonry, it's through his own endeavors, the blessings of God, and the teachings of Freemasonry, he will gain immortal life. Is there anything else that uh, you would say to a person that is a Christian that maybe entered the lodge, went through these first three degrees, and uh, did not realize what they were doing? How can you help them in discovering what these meanings really are in Masonry? I would say that for a born-again Christian who is truly in the Word of God, he is saturating his mind with the Word of God each day, he will have no problem seeing exactly what we have gone through here with this Hiram legend that is contrary to Scripture. The person who will have a hard time, John, will be the Christian who is not into the Word of God. This is the problem. If he's in the Word of God, he will have no problem seeing what we're saying is true because he knows his birth is in Christ, not in that Hiram legend. Where does the power come in Masonry to have the new birth? Where does the power come from? Is it within us? Well, to the Mason, it's within himself. He's constantly taught that by his own endeavors of virtuous education and the blessing of God, through the implements that are taught through the various temple building instruments, such as the, the uh, square, the level, the plumb, which are used to build an operative temple, they apply moral truths to these implements, and he is to use these to build a spiritual temple pleasing for God, but it's through his own efforts, never through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. In the weeks coming up, we're going to talk about the Masonic funeral, and you actually conducted many Masonic funerals. In the ritual that you gave at the Masonic funeral, what did you say about the future life? What hope did you hold out for Masons? Okay, now the funeral that we gave was the same whether he was a Christian, Jew, Buddhist, Hindu, Mohammedan, regardless of what faith he was, we said a universal service. Same, same one. Same one. Okay. So thereby, it was not exclusively Christian. It dealt with this Mason was true to all of our teachings, and the apron he now wears in a casket represents that purity of life and conduct, which he will now gain a mission into the celestial lodge above through our teachings never speaking about the person or work of Jesus Christ. So again, it's a works system that you follow in masonry, and because you do that, you're supposed to then hope for eternal life. That's correct, John. All right, what final word would you leave with those that are <coughs> Christian brethren that are in the lodge? I would say to those who are Christians, John, in the lodge, that I would really pray that they would look into the ritual that they actually went through in the third degree, especially dealing with the raising maybe order the tape that they have seen here tonight, look at it, and they will know that they actually went through this. It's something they cannot deny. Go to the Word of God, okay, especially in light of John, and especially in light of the book of Colossians. They are the two greatest books for convicting a Mason that what we have seen here tonight is absolutely biblically wrong for the born-again Christian. All right, now you will have to decide yourself. You've heard uh, Bill Mankin say, as a 32nd degree Mason, that there is a deeper meaning to the allegory, to the legend of Hiram Abiff. You've seen that recreated tonight exactly the way it's displayed in the lodge in most of the states. You decide what that deeper meaning is. 